So good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Hope you can. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Hope you can hear us correctly. If not, you there is a chat room. Uh, so welcome to today's uh, live presentations on the challenge of AI and how to build a system of trust beyond AI regulations. And so without further ado, let's present the speaker for today. Patrick, the floor is yours. Yep. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Patrick Penoir, and I'm a product manager at Dataiku for AI governance, and especially for uh, Govern, which is a dedicated node uh, to put in place your uh, governance framework. And my name is David Telaga, and I'm product marketing director for AI governance and ops at Dataiku. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll go uh, deeper into the presentations of today. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, take a look at of our agenda for today's sessions. Uh, so we have a focus agenda that really touched the key issue that we are facing as we integrated AI and analytics into operations. Uh, first, uh, we'll start by discussing the AI analytics governance challenge uh, I will present it, and that will cover basically the complexity while encountering like data privacy, uh, algorithmic bias and maintaining compliance as we scale AI across organizations. And next, we'll, Patrick will explore how to build a system of trust. And we are outlining the strategy to ensure that AI systems can stay transparent, ethical, and reliable, fostering and trust among stakeholders. And then we move to summary and takeaway. And if we have time, we'll open the floor for Q&A sessions where you can ask questions and we share our thoughts on today's topic. So uh, let's get started. So. Basically, analytics and AI governance challenge. We thought it was crucial to discuss that before we go deep dive into the topics. Uh, it's really crucial to understand exactly why establishing a trusted framework around AI is essential. And despite really strong intentions and the clear potential of AI, implementing the system isn't really straightforward. And organizations are, of course, eager to leverage AI whether to maximize investments or to harness new capability brought by technology like Gen AI. For example, in HR, Gen AI can streamline talent acquisitions by automating resume screening, generating interview questions, or even creating personalized onboarding experience. In marketing, AI can enhance customer engagement by creating personalized contents, optimizing ad campaigns, and predictive, uh, predicting consumer behavior. However, when it comes to actual deployment, these initiatives often face significant challenges. What happens once these AI projects are rolled out? And as they begin to demonstrate their value and proliferate across their orgs, governance and oversight teams often find themselves overwhelmed. Why? Because they lack a comprehensive view of all AI projects and struggle to reactively add transparency to initiatives that critically need it, particularly when these projects touch on sensitive areas like employee data, customer interactions, or uh, customer data. So how did we get there? So as a matter of fact, if we take a closer look, builder teams often don't place enough focus on the supervision and control of AI projects or data projects as data products as we might call them. And driven by the rapid adoptions of AI, there is a common but mistaken belief that simply democratizing AI will automatically build trust and ensure continuous growth. The idea that the more AI is deployed, the more users will adopt uh, it and the more value it will create. This is a myth of AI, uh, almost magical growth. And of course, it's not that simple. But deploying AI uh, is often more complex than it seems. And in real life, the adoption curve that we, often, we just have seen is often looks like this. So one of the main reasons is that the diversity within teams and the broad range of skill sets coupled with increasingly diverse demands really uh, put uh, a strong negative focus on this curve. And as more models uh, move into productions, team gradually lose focus and efficiency. And the growing complexity of projects make it really even harder to oversee everything, monitor projects and model performance, and assess their overall health. And surprisingly, the hidden costs associated with inefficiency become more apparent ultimately stopping expected profit. And as models continue to grow without explainability, it makes it even more difficult to trace and audit project progress. And this lead definitely to the rise of shadow AI, something you really want to avoid due to the negative consequences 
of non-governed AI systems, including the risk of fines for non-compliance with data and AI regulations. And team, we inevitably have less time to focus on innovations and building incremental value. They may, of course, twirl over directions in what began as a really promising opportunities for creating new value and monetizing services may turn into a significant technical depth impacting all levels of our organizations. Simply put, if we had to turn up these words and this curve of inefficiency and exposure to risk in a single image, we could choose this one. So with a rapid surge of Gen AI within business and the lack of three system of trust can be lost in the blink of an eye. And unsurprisingly, regulation agencies have anticipated the rapid rise of AI and are actively working to control its unchecked growth. Uh, as we have explored in the previous webinars with Jacob Beswick, it's really essential to be ready and comply with specific framework like the EUA Act, which is already setting the standard for AI regulations globally. But AI governance leaders must not only be aware of these existing regulations, but also proactively anticipate future requirements. And this really involves building a resilient and adaptive system, one that is fundamentally equipped to withstand new AI technologies and capable of navigating the shifting tides of regulatory change. So how to prevent it? How to be the conductor and not the undertaker of your AI project? For that, you must implement a long-term trusted approach to scale AI while keeping control and oversight of our AI project. This is exactly what we are going to look at in details in the next section with Patrick. So without further ado, I will hand over to Patrick who will present it into more detail. Yep, <clears throat> thank you, David. Um, so concretely, and um, more from a, a product perspective, um, so a few years ago, back in Dataiku V10, uh, we have created a new part um, of the Dataiku platform, which is called Govern, uh, and which is a dedicated node uh, for uh, governance. And it allows you uh, really to set up a governance framework uh, to help answering all those uh, challenges. Uh, and in particular, um, it allows you to follow three main steps or three main pillars uh, to help set up and define this system of trust. So typically, you want to be able to define your projects uh, in the sense of being able to centralize and prioritize all, or, all, all your AI projects uh, following consistency and following um, dedicated rules and dedicated frameworks. Then you want to operationalize uh, the delivery, meaning being able to make the link uh, between the governance layer and the operational systems. Uh, and you need to be able to oversee uh, the entire project lifecycle, which is more about uh, monitoring, tracking, uh, or giving oversight, especially to business, uh, so that they can ensure uh, the AI projects match the requirement which have been set and that we keep the uh, expected level of control. So if you go next. So if we have a, if we have a look at the, this first pillar, which is about uh, defining, uh, next. So with Govern, um, you can describe your um, AI project. So it means defining its scope, um, explaining to what business activity it is related, uh, who is sponsoring this project, what countries are impacted, so really things like that. And what is very important um, is that that kind of description cannot be random uh, depending who is in charge of doing it. So you need a framework so that all your projects are following the same structure, uh, the same workflow, and especially in case of audit. And you also need a framework so that it's easier to compare your projects uh, and your models on a daily basis to take decisions. Um, and then, you can qualify those projects depending on their level of risk, on their value, on their feasibility, so really things like that. And typically, um, you are able with that uh, kind of visualization you see here, which is a, a matrix uh, repre representing uh, all your projects based on uh, risk and value. You are able to compare uh, your project and to uh, prior prioritize them. Um, and you have the ability also to link your projects um, with an extra layer that we call business initiatives, uh, which is a way to regroup projects, uh, sharing common business goals in your company. And again, uh, really something helping to define, to classify, to organize the um, uh, various AI and analytics projects uh, in the company. 
Uh, next slide. <clears throat> so here, um, you can see some examples of project workflows that you can define and customize, of course. Um, so we deliver out of the box some basic workflows, uh, helping you to secure your MLOps practices, but we also deliver more complex workflows, uh, helping you to answer questions, typically around the EUAI Act. Uh, so today, uh, in this session, uh, we don't, uh, we won't do um, a deep dive uh, into the EU AI Act itself, but you can refer to the two previous webinars, uh, which have been done, uh, and which were really dedicated to that topic of the EU AI Act. Um, so again, everything is uh, fully customizable. Um, you can change existing workflows, create brand new ones, uh, and really to, to help uh, with new emerging regulation, whether geo-specific or industry-specific, and all that also helps uh, drive and refine new internal enterprise policies, uh, which are already in place or uh, that you will have to put in place uh, in the near future. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so once uh, you have defined your governance framework, uh, you can operationalize the delivery of your project. Uh, if you go next. <clears throat> and so for each project, um, you need to be able to decide uh, which ones need to be controlled and which ones can stay a bit, uh, I would say, under the radar uh, because there are, for example, I don't know, R&D projects uh, that will never need governance or because um, there are still test initiatives, POCs, uh, not really for uh, making important decisions. And with Govern, um, so you can see all your AI projects, and each time a new one is created, it automatically comes in Govern. So um, you have nothing to do. Uh, each time a new project is created, or a model, or a bundle, it automatically comes in this governance layer. Um, so you, you have nothing to import manually. Uh, and here it's really about tracking all the AI projects in a single cockpit. Uh, and selecting the, selecting the ones uh, you want to control that really require governance. Uh, and typically, your projects have models and bundles, and before deploying them, those models need to be reviewed and approved, uh, reviewed by uh, various people in the company, such as uh, the business, uh, the IT, or the compliance team. And they will have the ability to, to validate, to sign off, to approve that everything is okay, or uh, to reject uh, the models in the sense that they will not approve uh, the, the deployment in production because I don't know some bias uh, is detected, for example. Uh, and each time you have uh, notifications to warn um, that you have an explicit uh, action to make. Uh, and when everything is okay, when everything is uh, approved, uh, the model can be deployed, uh, meaning very concretely you are allowed to hit the deploy button in the deploy model. <coughs> Uh, if you go next slide. So here you have um, an example of a deployment sign-off, and that sign-off um, is really gating the deployment of a project uh, bundle in production. So here uh, it's an example where the deployment approval has been rejected for various reasons. Uh, here it's mentioned that uh, we might have some bias uh, in the project. So that's something which happens uh, in this governance layer within uh, the govern node. And if you go next, <clears throat> yeah, and at the design uh, and deployer level, so if someone still tries to deploy uh, the project in production, uh, you just get stopped. Uh, so physically, you cannot deploy your project, uh, you get a, an actual error. Uh, and that's very important to understand because um, all that, that governance, which is uh, put in place, it's not only declarative, um, but um, you are really tied to your operational systems. Uh, you are really linked with them. Uh, and if uh, at the governance layer, at the governance level, uh, it has not been granted, uh, any form of uh, deployment is just uh, purely physically prevented. Uh, if you go next. <clears throat> and so finally, uh, you can oversee things, uh, meaning you can monitor how those projects uh, and initiatives are evolving. Uh, next. 
And so here, uh, it's really about uh, tracking the progress of your AI project, um, having a centralized uh, view at which step of your project workflow you are in. Um, are you still at the exploration or qualification step? Uh, are your models already validated uh, and deployed? Uh, things like that. And when you have uh, hundreds of AI and analytics initiatives under development or in production, um, it can be difficult for uh, analytics leaders or business leaders to get uh, really a, a comprehensive view and status of all the projects and business initiatives. Um, so you get uh, such visualizations like this uh, Kanban view here, providing a centralized overview of uh, all uh, the governed projects organized by business initiatives and workflow stage. Um, so you can really track where you are, at which step you are in your overall project management and uh, project portfolio, uh, and really at the company level. And same for models. Uh, once your models are deployed, uh, you can monitor things and especially monitor potential drift uh, so that you are aware of potential issues uh, and warn people that you may need to uh, retrain a dedicated model, for example. <coughs> Uh, and if you go next. And so one last uh, thing for uh, this part, uh, highly linked to risk uh, and compliance management. So um, you uh, also have access to such functionalities where we provide uh, audit timelines, uh, either artifact specific or a, a global timeline encompassing all the uh, actions which has been performed uh, on each and every object you are governing. Uh, so you are really able to see uh, who has done what and when. Uh, and it's not only that, uh, you also want to, uh, to, to give a view showing the comprehensive state of the system at a specific point in time. So you are typically able to answer questions like, uh, okay, six months ago, what was the status of my system? Uh, who had approved the deployment of these specific models? Uh, when uh, has it been deployed? Uh, were there particular comments? So all those things uh, that you, you want to be able to answer, especially in case uh, of audit. So that was for uh, the third and last uh, pillar. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. Always surprised by your uh, the way you can uh, summarize and present things uh, in a steady pace. Uh, that was like the presentation of like uh, how you can build a system of trust. We showcase you some uh, governance capabilities that are deep uh, inside the Dataiku platforms. Um, and as we have seen here, uh, it was really defined into uh, three steps. Uh, we just show you some. Um, uh, screenshots of some of the governed capabilities. Governed means uh, a, a specific nodes built inside the data eco platform that help you really to uh, oversee any kind of projects, analytics on AI that have been built with the uh, data eco platforms uh, and without the data eco platform as well. So with governed, we specifically show you, like the uh, what Patrick showed you in the first step, the project overview, the risk and value qualification, which is really uh, important step uh, when it's about like risk impact assessments of your of your models and projects and also important also to uh, centralize everything like checks and documentations in one places and this comes on top of already existing capabilities that are uh, into the AI ML capabilities of the data eco platforms such as Fernex Fernex metrics interactive scorings and model explainability that have all, always been in the platform from the start uh, and this is really something which is important to keep in mind is that these dedicated governance, are, um, uh, which has been highlighted here, comes really natively with the, uh, the, the specific control capabilities that uh, were specifically dedicated to data scientists and analytics teams. Second steps, we focus on operating, delivery, and forcing trust, where Patrick showed you uh, a screenshot of the model sign-offs and also how we can uh, implement alert and notifications so you don't have to have a constant look about what existing uh, what what is uh, into the platform. The monitoring system will help you to alert you when something goes wrong, like a drift into the model performance, for for an example. 
And as well, this goes really uh, with in, in, uh, well in, in synchronization with our end-to-end -end operationalization capabilities of the of the platforms, with specific metrics that are uh, related to the models and alerts and checks that are existing into uh, into the platforms, where you can control different steps of the AI development life cycles with uh, data. So pretty useful for if you are an analytics or a data scientist uh, or an ML engineers wanting to operationalize a loop of, uh, of models uh, directly with data. And last but not least, uh, we show really how to oversee the analytics value uh, together. And the terms value is really important because here we are not just focusing on the different steps of different kinds of documentation, but also uh, what's the impact, uh, what are the models that are uh, that have really uh, have a strong impact and focus on the performance. So you can also attach uh, these models and project to business initiatives directly within the platforms, which help you to really uh, have a, a, a quick glimpse about uh, overview about the, the value that you have created uh, in the data scientist teams have created with the platforms. And again, this goes on, on top of the scenario, the deployment health monitorings, the audit trails capabilities and the assertion check that are existing within the platforms that are uh, also loved by, uh, by, by data scientists. Um, that concludes this uh, first uh, part, and uh, we'll go uh, further with questions. Uh, one thing to, to keep in mind is that the next phase will be a webinar, which will happen in, the, in three weeks, uh, done by Triveni Gandhi, so on AI governance without limits. So ensuring organization-wide control of diverse AI models. And that's something that always uh, important is really to see uh, how you can monitor and govern uh, different kind of models. Um, you can, of course, ask for that they could demo if you are a customer or directly on our platforms. Uh, we have developed white papers and then another one which is under finalizations, which really focus about these uh, three steps of building system of trust. There is an existing readiness checklist uh, a good way to uh, see if you can, if your organization is fully prepared for IOA Act or start being prepared for IOA Act, so you can focus on the readiness, and uh, and that's something which was important to keep in mind as a as a follow up. So thank you for your time, and uh, if you have some question, it's it's now uh, I would say now or never, but it's now. <laughs> So Marie, do do we do we have some questions? So maybe one, I think that to say basically, uh, can you govern models a bit elsewhere? And if yes, uh, what kind of models? Uh, maybe it's a question for you, Patrick. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, uh, of course, with govern, uh, so you can govern data eco models, meaning the models which has been uh, built uh, in the data eco platform. Um, but we uh, have also uh, capabilities uh, that we call external model, where you can actually point to um, uh, third party models and third party endpoints, uh, typically uh, Azure, uh, Databricks, uh, Google Vertex, uh, all those uh, boys, uh, you, you, you name it. Um, and so through those external model capabilities, you just point um, to um, their um, externally deployed uh, endpoints and uh, it automatically comes into govern so that you can use uh, the exact framework that uh, we showcased just before uh, for uh, qualification documentation uh, risk assessment uh, and so on and so forth so yeah of course and there is another question patrick is like uh, isn't too much control on data scientist autonomy um do you, do you want to take it maybe yeah yeah i can i can, I can take it uh i i think it's uh it's it's both as we explained in the challenges uh it's necessary it's something that you have really to put in place from the from the get-go um doesn't mean that you shouldn't uh leave the autonomy of data scientists of course it's important to leave them uh, the floor for uh, to to foster their creativity and their autonomy and for that you it's it's a uh, with govern, you can also have a view about systems that are governed or ungoverned. So you can uh, decide to govern projects that are uh, leave projects that are still in the staging uh, phase, and uh, and and decide to apply governance on projects that are uh, into productions and that are uh, up to go, go into productions. 
And I think that's something which is important is really to uh, to find a way to not put too much control, but balance control and autonomy between data scientists and uh, business stakeholders. Another question maybe for you, uh, Patrick, is like uh, uh, regarding the accelerator that we talk about for regulations, um, are, uh, where can we find them and where, uh, how it is provided within the platform? Um, <clears throat> so when you have Govern, you have a, a dedicated uh, flavor of Govern, which is called Advanced Govern, where uh, you have actually access to uh, dedicated solutions. Um, so typically one for EUAI Act uh, and also some others which are industry specific, for example, uh, GXP uh, for the pharma. Uh, you have um, a one for uh, MRM. Um, uh, and also other solutions. So yeah, we, we do have uh, various solutions which help you comply with all those um, um, regulations, whether geospecific or industry specific. And what's important to notice is that we are working on uh, uh, the EU Act readiness that we have developed and released is really adapted to the latest uh, changes and updates about the EU Act regulations. That means that you are uh, we are accelerating your compliance readiness. Uh, within the platforms doesn't mean that you will be uh, totally uh, fully compliant once you follow the step, but at least you have a, a good basis uh, for you to start uh, harnessing the compliance of your system with uh, the technology. And then a question from Chandra, Patrick, do you have a questionnaire for model security and governance? Um, a questionnaire? Uh, I'm not sure about questionnaire, but um, so yeah, part of um, those um, dedicated solution, uh, like for example, EUI Act or GXP. Um, so you, yeah, you, you, you do have some steps that you need to go through um, so that it helps uh, comply um, with those regulations when you are developing models and projects. Uh, sometimes it's about uh, questions, but not always. So it's not always a, que a questionnaire, but uh, yeah, we, you, you are guided through all the steps, uh, which um, helps you comply with those uh, regulations. And another question is really about the, how, how, how much of GNI can, you, can we govern with the Taiku? Um, <clears throat> so close to everything that you can build through the LLM mesh. Um, so you know that in design, um, when you want to build a GNI project, you can uh, build that based on um, what we've called the LLM mesh. And each time uh, you use a, a project or dedicated uh, recipes, uh, which use um, uh, LLM models, um, then in Govern it appears in a dedicated way so that you see that you have a dedicated risk uh, because you are using LLM uh, and then you can um, govern those um, those projects uh, with dedicated templates uh, and yeah, dedicated uh, workflows uh, with having a, a particular a qualification uh, because uh, it's linked to LLM uh, engineering. Yeah, and regarding the uh, the template for uh, GXP or you act, uh, the, you will have some screenshots and solutions uh, uh, data sheet that are available on the data Eco's website. But specifically, the, the templates are really linked to the to the platform itself. But uh, you can see exactly what what's going on with that, and I think that's something that you can ask for for a demo to see exactly what it means in real life. Uh, we will be more than happy to uh, to show you exactly uh, how to uh, how to proceed with this uh, template. So if, if we don't have any more questions, and uh, thank you for your attendance at this webinar, and uh, hope to uh, see you soon and for the next one, which will be Trivani on the September the 17th. And that will specifically focus on how you can govern uh, models that are built elsewhere and not just into uh, the Taiku. And we go uh, deep dive into uh, how you can do that with uh, the advanced governance capabilities of the Taiku platform. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.